Today we are going to talk about the spleen. Spleen is a very important lymphoid organ. Is it a primary lymphoid organ or secondary lymphoid organ? Secondary, secondary lymphoid organ. Primary lymphoid organs are those organs in which lymphocytes develop and mature. For example, bone marrow is primary lymphoid organ uh, which produces the stem cells for B cells as well as produces stem cells for the T cells, bone marrow. Plus, bone marrow also leads to maturation of B cells. And thymus is also a central lymphoid organ because T cells develop in the thymus. Once lymphocytes develop in the bone marrow and in the thymus go to circulation and eventually they get settled into different peripheral lymphoid organs, right? Those peripheral lymphoid organs in which immunocompetent, fully trained B cells and T cells settle down and wait for the antigen so that they, the lymphocytes can be stimulated. Those lymphoid organs are called secondary lymphoid organ. Again, I will repeat it. What are the primary lymphoid organs and what are secondary lymphoid organs? Primary lymphoid organs are those lymphoid organs in which lymphocytes are generated, produced and or lymphocytes are educated there. For example, primary lymphoid organ is Classically, we talk about the bone marrow as and spleen, uh, thymus and thymus. In bone marrow, lymphocytes are produced. Plus, in bone marrow, B lymphocytes mature, right? And in thymus, T lymphocyte mature. Is that right? So, these two organs, bone marrow and thymus, are considered primary lymphoid organs, right? Once B cell convert into immunocompetent B cells and T cells convert into immunocompetent T cells, right? These cells from the primary lymphoid organs come into circulation. And then from the circulation, these immunocompetent B cells and T cells settle down into peripheral lymphoid organs. Like they may settle into adenoids or into tonsils or they may get settled into spleen or lymph nodes, pears patches and many other areas. Now, these areas are called peripheral lymphoid organ. The largest peripheral lymphoid organ is spleen. What is the size of spleen? Spleen is approximately equal to the, yes, clenched fist. Don't think of other things. I'm talking about, I'm showing you the fist, clenched fist, right? So, this is the size of spleen. And what is the weight of spleen? Yes, you are laughing. You are very happy with this fist. Yes. What is the weight of spleen? Don't tell me 5 kg. So, fist is not that heavy. It is just 150 grams approximately, right? So, adult spleen is about the size of the clenched, clenched fist and it is about 150 grams and it is situated in left upper quadrant of the abdomen, right? And it is covered by peritoneum, right? Spleen is covered by the layer of peritoneum, right? Now, we will talk about spleen into detail. Let's suppose that here is your spleen, right? This is medial surface of spleen and here I am showing the capsule of spleen, right? As you know, the first point you have to understand that capsule of the spleen is covered by, yeah, squamous epithelial cells and these cells are coming from, yes please, peritoneum, right? Whole capsule of the spleen is covered by the peritoneum, right? On the medial side, there is hilum, right? Hilum is the point where the major arteries, splenic arteries entering there. This is splenic artery, right? It's a high flow splenic artery enters there and splenic vein is from the hilum splenic vein is coming out vein right uh, plus so splenic artery is bringing the blood to spleen and splenic vein is draining the blood out of spleen is that right along with that of course there are splenic nerves as well right Plus, there are lymphatics 
from the hilum lymphatics are also coming out and these are called efferent efferent lymphatics right <coughs> which thing i'm missing in the hilum yes hilum is on the medial surface of the spleen where splenic artery is entering there right splenic vein is draining the blood plus nerves are connecting there plus efferent efferent lymphatics are coming out where are the efferent lymphatics in the spleen yes dr isma where is the efferent lymphatics you will guess so she thinks that spleen is something like nymph lymph node and she thinks that here the lymphatics are coming yeah and guess will be wrong anyone who has the right guess where are the afferent how the lymph is leaving the spleen i'm asking how the lymph comes to the spleen yes please okay he, there's a new concept the uh, lymph is coming through the artery no <laughs> artery bring the blood it never brings the lymph right remember before you tell me your private concepts spleen does not have afferent lymphatics spleen does not have afferent lymphatics right this is one way how spleen differs from lymph nodes lymph nodes have afferent lymphatics as well as efferent lymphatics but spleen does not have afferent lymphatics lymph is formed within the spleen and then lymph flows out through efferent lymphatics am i clear to everyone now when we talk about the capsule of the spleen capsule of the capsule of the spleen is made of very dense connective tissue capsule of the spleen is made of very dense connective tissue with a lot of collagen fibers and from this capsule right for example if i make spleen here and this is a capsule from the capsule there are partitions fibrous septa going in and these fibrous septa divide the spleen into multiple regions these fibrous septa connective tissue septa which are going from the capsule with in the deeper part of the spleen or we say from the capsule connective tissue septa move inside the parenchyma of the spleen connective tissue septa move into parenchyma of the spleen these septa are called trabeculae what are these septa called trabeculae trabeculae so again let me repeat it the spleen has dense connective tissue capsule covered by the peritoneum and from its capsular surface uh, connective tissue septa are going into parenchyma of the spleen and these connective tissue septa or partitions are called splenic trabeculae splenic trabeculae is that clear another very important uh, concept which i would like to introduce that within this capsule and within this trabecular connective tissue there are there are special type of cells which are called myo myofibroblast these are cells which can show contractility within the capsule of the spleen and within the trabeculae of the spleen there are myofibroblast these are special type of cells on stimulation they can lead to contraction what is the purpose of this uh, myofibroblast actually these myofibroblast cells have receptors for epinephrine and norepinephrine so when you have strong sympathetic stimulation spleen capsule and trabeculae should contract and spleen act as one of the blood storing organ so it should add stored blood to the circulation under stressful circumstances this function of the spleen is classically seen in lower animals especially in dogs but not in humans human spleen is not so efficiently contracting that under stress it will add significant amount of blood to the circulation no right but in lower animal for example if we talk about the dog right and in the dog spleen there are lot of myofibro 
blast and when dog is under stress these myofibroblast contract and spleen of the dog shrink and releases a lot of stored blood into circulation so that under cir stressful circumstances it, it this added blood to the circulation help the dog to even fight with the enemy or if enemy is stronger then fly away from the enemy is that clear so these myofibroblasts are not really uh, that important in the human <coughs> spleen right human spleen very poorly contract right yes please uh, you have a question when you're running really like hard is that what, what that pain is you know, you pain when you run your okay, Mr. S. Another question that uh, when he is running, he develops some pain in abdomen. <laughs> is it in the spleen? Uh, not necessarily. No, but that sharp pain that you get after that, after that quadrant. Everyone does not get that pain. You have to see doctor, right? So that we really check is it spleen or something else, right? Maybe someone has pointed you there, and after that you run, you really feel a sharp pain there while you are running, right? So let's come back. If, uh, Dr. Essen should be referred to some patient care system, right? And let's come back and talk about spleen, right? Now, to understand the spleen, we will follow the splenic artery. Here you are, okay? Here you are. You will enter into splenic artery and you will move through that, and eventually you will come out through splenic. When you are really tired now, right? So we'll start our travel journey of understanding spleen through the splenic artery. We'll go through its divisions, study all the white pulp and red pulp, and then come out through this, right? So let's start first of all. Splenic artery, when it enters inside the substance of the spleen, when it enters into substance of the spleen, it divides into branches which are called trabecular branches. So first of all, splenic artery will go into, I will write it here, splenic artery, yes, will go into trabecular arteries, trabecular arteries. Now, I will not show all the trabecular arteries, right, let's suppose that these are trabecular artery branches, I will show only one trabecular artery branch, this is trabecular artery branch and of course uh, we should show some trabecular connective tissue also here right so this is trabecular connective tissue now as trabecular artery is going through the trabecular system you know trabeculae are the partitions made by connective tissue right so this is one connective tissue partition in which trabecular branch of Splenic artery is going. Is that right? No problem up to here. From this, a branch will jump from trabecular system. Okay, this is a little bit, you know, I must say, what is this type of branch? Now, from trabecular artery, branches are going into substance of the spleen, right? And these branches, special branches, are having a very special function and I will explain it. Actually, around these arteries, lymphocytes are accumulated. Around these arteries, what is there? Lymphocytes are accumulated. And aggregated lymphocytes are making a sheath of lymphocytes around this artery. They are making a sheath of lymphocytes around this artery, right? If I really show it here, now, these are basically T cells. Which cells are there? These are T lymphocytes, right? These are all T lymphocytes and these T lymphocytes make a special cylindric, cylindrical, you can say, sheath around it, right? Now, okay, let me make it more clear. This is a cylinder made of what? Lympho, collection of lympho, yes, lymphocytes. And these all lymphocytes are, yes, please, T cells or B cells? These are T cells. 
and in the center of this T cell sheath or T cell cylinder there is an artery going on that artery is a branch of which artery? Trabecular artery. Am I clear? And this of course here I will make all of them. Yeah, these are all T cells. And in the center of that T cell cylinder, here is the beautiful artery. And this artery, yes. What is the name of this artery, please? I will be impressed by someone who is too good, spleen specialist. Yes, who is spleen specialist among you? Anyone at if the mini, minimum thing you should know about spleen is the name of this artery. If you don't know the name of this artery, you don't know spleen. This is the minimum single point you should know about spleen. Because around it, there is special lymphocyte sheath. Ho oh, oh, ho, this is called central artery. Don't you look that it is in the center of the sheath? Central artery. We don't need Sherlock Holmes or Dr. Watson to come here and find the name of it. It is the center of aggregates of spleen, uh, lymphocytes. So this is called which artery? Central artery. It is so simple. Isn't it? 